One-to-one -one conversations with the UK graffiti writers you need to know. Writers before the fame, where it's all about style, getting up, and authenticity. Molotov Art and Paint Supplies proudly sponsored a Killer Keller podcast, Graffiti Sweet Week Special. Seven writers spread across three generations of UK graffiti. Headphones on, speakers up, and get ready for the conversation. Come on, ma. Killer Cala Fortified featuring Patuan. Available on all good music platforms now. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Ready? Ready. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller podcast graffiti sweep week, and we're kicking it off like this live and direct from central London or central as you need to be. We have a Don, someone from my era, Panic ATG, inside the building. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, good. Nice to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Caught a good day for it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sun yeah. shining. Yeah. Start the day of a cosy chat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And being so close to Easter as well. Mm. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Taking the little ones out to the country. You got little ones? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Good little kids. Little boys. Ah, lovely. Mm. Yeah, I was doing them a uh, little graffiti club with some of their mates yesterday, actually. Get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got them the little kind of uh, water based. Spray cans. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really bother reading the back of them. I just oh. thought, yeah, water base, like safe, whatever. Yeah. Got them all piled into my studio, and then they were like making a proper mess. Some of them were spraying it backwards, like, <laughs> on themselves. Like, better, better check this actually. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Keep out of reach of children. Yeah, like, yeah. Cut it short, but. Um, That's crazy. Just, like, just get rid of my phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, get it. All good. Um, did you ever think there was a time in your in your career where you, you'd have those scenarios where you're teaching a, a gaggle of kids and like you're dealing with fumes and whatnot? And yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there was always like kind of older people that showed me stuff. I was a bit older than three, granted, but you know, when <laughs> yeah. I was like 12, 11, you know, so I always like the idea of like passing it onwards, so That's passing fine. it down. So obviously when you've got kids, you're going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You was, we was talking actually on the, at, the, at the beginning, just before VT, I understand, that, um, yeah, we, you and me have crossed in paths probably from me from stage and you from track or mm. from, you know, yeah. train, which yeah, is actually yeah. a really crazy, crazy thought, isn't it? The mm. idea of like knowing someone create in the creative connective sense. Yeah, yeah, for what, like 10, 15 years. Yeah. You know, it's the first time we sat down and had a chat, but, yeah. you know, like I was saying earlier, I remember watching you on stage when I was, like, you know, 15 or something, back, yeah. like, 2001, 2002, yeah. so. Yeah. And uh, I think you were pals with Solo One. You are doing right, some stuff yeah. with him back still, then. Still yeah. my boy, yeah, still my yeah, boy. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we had a real gunning of, like, you know, sticker. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was big on the street promo stuff, wasn't he? Yeah. Mm. That was all good. Right, so I got... I got duped by an ex of mine. It was amazing, right? So at around that time when I was doing a graffiti thing with, mm. with Boyd, and I was hanging out around his squat place, and oh, we would just be there. Just, you know, and I, I broke up with my missus at the time. It was mm. a pretty, pretty deep thing because I was off on my own like career tangent. So she took it upon herself to, to start doing her own stickers. Right. Just saying her name, just yeah, to get yeah, back yeah. at me. Okay. So there's me, like, <laughs> stickers up. And I'd see this. I won't say, yeah. I won't say her name, but I'm just yeah. like, huh? Yeah. And it just didn't, I didn't twig it, just some sub subconscious thing that's kind of backlash at me, you know? Yeah, it reminds me of that, like that Nat has herpes. Have you seen that knocking around these days? <laughs> no. Someone's but... going around writing Nat has herpes everywhere. I figured it would probably be the same thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> pissed, get, off, what, pissed off X, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's just a like, general warning, do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> stay away. <laughs> yeah, stay yeah. away. Did you think that's associated with a particular graffiti writer or something like no, that? No, it's not. You can tell. It's just like someone just writing it in capitals. Yeah. yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, but you know, there's other angry exes out there using the yeah. graffiti medium. That's one to remember. But mm -hmm. that's the thing; it's always the simple things, or the most funny. It's like Nat has herpes. Mm. That becomes like the the king of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sticks in people's minds because yeah. it's different. Yeah. I guess it's like um, you know, certain writers had the same appeal. Rain Man, people would like. I was people just going to say, Rain Man. Of, like graffiti would be like, who's Rain Man? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it was 
quite legible and longer and saying something. Yeah. You know, and it has two words essentially, isn't it? Yeah, in one yeah. it has that kind of cinematic, you know, Rain Man, you know, mm. it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a funny one, isn't it? Mm. Who ca- where did you get Panic from? Um, it was a skateboard company. Yeah, yeah of course. Now it's, yeah, it was Panic and Blueprint. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I had like a variety of like shit tags at first, <coughs> as you do, but like I think I was writing hash, but doing it really badly, and uh, and then yeah, I kind of you know what I was, I was always inspired by how, like the, the real simple, tags with like impact like mm. um you know chop and zonk and bosh and ouch yeah. kind of late nineties era in North London there was a lot of that yeah. And I wanted a tag like that, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, you'd see the way they do this, just a simple, like, capitals hand style. And it was quite, yeah. it was quite difficult to emulate. And I remember I had um, had this skateboard. This it was a big, big thing, actually. And I was down at South Bank and I was just laughing, like, what am I going to write? I need, a, I need a new tag. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, you had the grip tape. They used to have, like, the brakes in the grip tape. Of course, and then yeah. had the brand on it. And so that was, that was panic. So I started off with the C and then, yeah. Oh, that's fire. Yeah, 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 then it went to the K. Because the, the K ended it better, you know. Yeah. You kick out of the K. So, I was, yeah, yeah, I was into that. I trying to think of when I first saw you, you come up. There was certainly an attitude, like an a revamp a- attitude towards ATG. Like, um, I, 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 admired, I admired your stuff. Asset was a fire. Snore, mm. man. Like, these would, these become like, and then the whole RT crew. Mm. You know, these yeah. guys, you know, I think you guys spearheaded like a new kind yeah. of wave. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of, um, so it's like me, me and Rest, um, man, like Harm, mm. we mm. were more into the kind of like dubs at first. And, uh, and then Asset and Snore were like the ones, you know, pulling the styles out the bag mm-hmm. and, you know, coming with emotion on tracks. And so we obviously all followed suit and that was our thing. Um, but yeah, it was just that t- time and place. I think, you know, you get people p- produce stuff in a way that's a reaction to what's come before them. And, yeah. um, you know, at the time there was just a lot of uh, a lot of silver and black on, yeah. on the train lines and... Um, because there hadn't been like a massive buff yet, the silver and black dubs were all painted on like Victorian brick walls. Mm. So obviously, like over time, that they fade quite quickly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying kind it's, of the black. A, yeah, they're very porous bricks yeah. and it's they're dirty. So it's yeah. like um, <clears throat> for us, it was you know there was obviously loads of good shit out there, but there was a lot of like ghost dubs mm. and stuff like that. And and so our like what inspired us was to. Start a motion in the tracks, and then yeah, just to give it a new surface. Yeah, a new yeah. surface, because like you know, I never really thought about it like that at the time. But it, you are creating, so you can never turn the buffed surface back to brick. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's so true. from when we were emotioning the walls and other people were emotioning the walls, from that point there was always a surface to paint colours onto. Whatever happened yeah. to your piece, um, so yeah. It's, yeah, we definitely had our own approach to things. I never thought uh, about it like that, but but yeah. at that time as well, especially it's like it was just a, a mass of like tags with doves and fraps and just people just trying to get as into the smallest mm. crannies of wall space and mm. it just became like which I, I loved. But it, yeah, how yeah. are you ever gonna compete? Yeah, yeah. But I think you know it's always interesting to look at the way people approach the graffiti thing. Mm. And um, I always really like it when you can see someone's noticed a gap in what other people are doing and, and they fill it and mm. they stand out a lot more. And, like, that was something we always tried to do. And, you know, you see you see people pop up out of nowhere yeah. doing it. And, like, you know, at the moment you've got that Helch guy and, you know, the rollers mm. been done before, but he's obviously got this game plan and he's, like, mm. picking certain spots. Mm. No one really knows who he is too tough. Mm. And he's just, like, dropping these super crisp things. And there's, you know, Type did it before him. Or it might just be, like, throw-ups, but saturating it to a point where yeah. you can't ignore it. And, yeah. like, you know, there's... It's always good when people t- kind of take the initiative to like find out what you know a new route into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I route think to that, market. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's all you know. It's it's it's, it's important um, strategy, yeah. and you can apply it to other things, and it and it shows someone's like um, mm. kind of wit and intelligence or whatever you want to name it. Yeah. When you see the way they they display their stuff, so um, 
Yeah, I think for us that was always something we tried to do. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean about the wit and mm. um, and like yeah, finding your niche and forecast. I mean, you guys have always been f- quite forward thinking as far as like you know you you had the merch thing going mm. and all that sort of stuff. Like, at what point do you think to yourself, actually, maybe this legality of what we're doing and trying to marry it with something that's mm. c- c- you know a commodity? Yeah, where do you draw the line before yeah. it gets really overly noticed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. I- I don't think there is, it really depends what you're doing. Like, I still refuse to look at graffiti. You know, if you're painting like track sides and certain street bombing things, yeah, it's illegal, but I don't really view it as that illegal. It's partly, you know, like, credit that to a bit of my downfall, do you know what I'm saying? In terms of getting (laughs) raided. Yeah, I'm all right. I I never like to be that paranoid or cautious yeah. about it just yeah. because I don't like to live like that and you know yeah cool it can it can definitely backfire on you but you know I think like graffiti opens up the doors to to so many other avenues into the, the creative world or just to, to life you know yeah. and I think if you keep your mind open to that then you know a, a lot can come from it and I don't think you should necessarily be like oh but I need to completely detach that from graffiti mm. because part of your DNA it's, yeah it's part of it and and like you know mm. some people might feel more comfortable to be like right I'm a tattoo artist now and I don't and I want to make sure that nobody knows I was a graffiti writer that's your own yeah that's your own preference but you know um I don't I think yeah. I think the world is open <laughs> do you know what I mean what starts yeah, yeah. with graffiti can lead to other things and you know yeah I like the I like the back story of <clears throat> I, I mean I like it because you, when you when you have a journey with an artist or a personality, mm. I like the fact Goldie is Goldie now. Yeah, he's doing his yoga thing. He's doing his DJ thing. He's yeah. doing all this awesome. The but look at the look at the you know the trajectory. Yeah, yeah. And being that he's from a predominantly like hip hop, totally graffiti mm. world, it's just think it's just completely like sorts me out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, completely. And, you know, if you look, like, way back to um, Futura doing the banners for yeah. the Clash and the punk band yeah, yeah, here yeah, and yeah. stuff, like, you know, if he was to say, no, I don't want to do that because graffiti's graffiti and I don't want to go... Do you know what I'm saying? Then it's, it's, it's a less interesting slice of history. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That whole link-up and the way that happened, that's from being open and understanding history. that, like, yeah, you know, got to develop on things, yeah. You said you you just mentioned there the, the kind of... Did I say nonchalance? passiveness to to like painting mm. that you have mm. like uh, even in your like most intense times like, yeah being chased or being on yeah. the track being on being anywhere and painting mm-hmm. how do you keep a passive head to that no i think you know what i think when you're properly involved in it and you're doing it like mm. day in day out mm. um you're you're much more alert and and sharper to like what's going on around you and the possible like dangers of whatever that might be, and you keep a you keep a tidy house. Mm. But it, I think as well, I've got I've probably got more passive to it with age as well. Like you know when you're when you yeah. when you're fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, like it definitely still feels very rebellious and very you know more criminal than it does mm. when you get older, and and it's like. I think as you get more of an understanding of the world, you put it into context a bit differently. Mm-hmm. So f- for me now, like, you know, while I'm here in London, I don't really go out at night that much, but I still paint graffiti. Mm. And that might be that I have paint in my boot and I see like an abandoned shop, I'll just pull over and I'll, and I'll paint on it. And yeah. I'd prefer to do it how I want to do it and take my time. And then if police come over and say, what yeah. are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm painting on the shop. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's Hello. abandoned and I'll just whatever, get into yeah. it with them. And if they want to nick me, then they want to nick me. But it's like, I prefer to live like that. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I think, yeah, no, if you're, if you're painting tubes all the time, trains, mm. whatever, or like even just doing bait spots all around town, then like... Bait spots, yeah. Yeah, you've got to be yeah. like a bit more like cautious and stuff. But I was just never the most cautious. And yeah. like, you know, my boys used to get pissed off at me, but <laughs> really, really, yeah, a little bit because you don't, you know, just like how old have you been at this point? Uh, when I was like 17, 18, and stuff, like, you were just, yeah, I just you always had paint all over me and stuff, and whatever, do you know what I mean? That's the coolest, yeah. coolest shit, yeah. 
Um, but I, I don't know. Like, some people enjoy the whole secret agent thing about it. Yeah, you know, people buzz off that. Yeah. So each to their own. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Like going out in suits and Lone like, Star, <laughs> you know, yeah. Mission Impossible. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had mm. them here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have. Yeah. Um, do you think like with like your style, the way you see with your style, and that removal of that those formative years of like mm. being like dead, like <laughs> looking around mm. and like and being able to, you know, I mean, shops are still like bait if you want them to be yeah but you're, you're you're able to take your time do you think that has really honed in your style because i've noticed y- your progression in mm. techniques and style the look of the, of the look of your work mm. developing do you think that has yeah you know? yeah yeah definitely because i mean like if, if you were just painting say rooftops for instance yeah, yeah. like you don't really know what the roof's going to be like when you get up there mm. and you know you know i can stretch to however high um but a lot of the time when you're up there like like, for example the roof is going to be lower than what you can see so to to start off with like you have to start from chest height at the bottom of your letters in order for people to see it right so a lot so it might be you have to do it simple letters so people can see it from the road and it's going to be quite small and Likewise, when you're painting panels, a lot of the time, you, you know, you have the line at the bottom of the train where yeah. you work off the top of that, so it changes your style. When you start, like, taking your time and just painting on big shutters in the daytime, you have full freedom to, to do whatever you want. And yeah. In fact, the more you dress up the shop front with a ladder and a dust sheet and all the rest, the less hassle you're going to yeah. have. So it looks professional. Yeah, man. no one's going to stop you, especially when you're a bit older. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, I think circumstances definitely dictate your style to a certain degree yeah, yeah and that's that's cool do you know what i mean yeah. it, it changes what you're doing um likewise if you're street bombing the whole time that's that's essentially where throw-ups have come yeah. from and, and doing things quickly and your, your style can get better when you when you paint quickly yeah yeah I like you know so. tags you can see you can see if someone's like a, a proper bomber because their style will be a lot more fluid yeah if you're just painting mm. legal walls yeah your tag's going to be a little bit rigid do you know mm. what I'm saying? And a lot of care put into the tag, but it's not flowing out your hand as loosely. Yeah. So it's like... You can see that. I, I, I get where you're coming from. Mm. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, Fluidity. So like, yeah, I mean, that, that happens a lot. And also, you know, I think there's a long period of everything getting buffed in London quite quickly. Yeah. And that led to people painting Which is certainly simple, a different quick now. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A lot of trains going on at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madness. Yeah, yeah. No, they've, uh, they've started slacking. Does it's that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's good <laughs> to see, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the naughty's called and said they want their trains back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. It's interesting you were saying about the, the chest. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a token trick that, <clears throat> for someone like me who's mm. an observer, you understand, to, to see that, like on a rooftop, there mm. is that kind of like, well, how did... How yeah. do you know? How do you know that it's even going to be seen? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, basically, when you're climbing around the city the whole time, you never really know until you're up in a spot mm-hmm. how easy it's going to be. Even if you fly by on a train, you're like, cool, I'm going to paint that spot. But then you get there and it's like you're standing in, like, three foot of, like, brambles yeah, yeah, before yeah. you get to the floor. Do you know what I'm saying? And then you've got to, like, get something to stand on. It might be a rickety old chair you found beside the tracks. Yeah. So all of that stuff is, you know, but that's part of what makes the act of graffiti like challenging and you know um it's impressive when you yeah. know that stuff because it's not as easy as it always looks that you shit's yeah. that would i mean i i i take to i i love my mortality like the whole idea i mm. think that was my biggest downfall of writing mm. you know a young even at a young age I, I never thought oh i'm mortal i can live forever mm. like you guys seem to have like this kind of cat nine lives thing going on at mm. a, particularly at the age that you're referring to mm. going up on a roof yeah you know what i mean yeah no it's just you don't you don't look at it as dangerous when you're doing it at the time mm. but it's that classic thing like even you know regardless of graffiti your parents are going to tell you don't do something yeah. don't do this or when you're like mm. a, a teenager you think you've got it all well, yeah, the whole yeah, thing, yeah. and you, you know, you do if you paint tracks, you know, like every week. You obviously your senses become a lot yeah. more alert. You know all the sounds and yeah. all the stuff. You know what, what's a dangerous like box and what's a yeah. dangerous track and all the yeah. rest. But 
it's yeah undeniably still kind of you know your 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 life is more at risk than your mm. average person and, and people will say like yeah but you can die any day you know you walk out in front of a car and while that's true like definitely when you're painting graffiti you need to be like without stating the obvious yeah. like super alert and like you know not be too fucked when you're out there painting and yeah. stuff like that because you know you are doing dangerous stuff and i think like you know now i've got kids and the idea of when they got to 15 mm. if i started seeing their names like hanging off of bridges and things like that i would be scared yeah. of course you'd be scared because it's, yeah. it changes everything changes mm. so um you know i think i think like you know for the most part graffiti writers learn a lot about what they're capable of and, and the city around them mm. um you know, there's there's tragedies happen, yeah. um, but who's to say? You know, it's like I think no one really questions it as much. When you when you're like that age, painting graffiti is your like Everest, so to speak. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. It is your rock climbing. You, you know, you get that same adrenaline. It's right. important to you, and there's no saying that it it isn't mm. as important. But, you know, when someone dies rock climbing, for instance, it's always doing what they loved. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? And people find peace in that and don't really question it. Like, yeah. they knew what they were getting themselves into. They were passionate about climbing and yeah. they died doing it. Yeah. And I think, like, there isn't that much separation between graffiti. Yeah. Um, and the only hope is that, like, people doing it are aware of that. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? They're really aware of the dangers and that they get to, like, fulfil their desire, you know, to paint and do big things but yeah. before that happens, God forbid, you know. Do you, do you feel like you fulfilled your desire? Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. One thing I've noticed about the conversations I have on here um, is because I've talked to, like, so many different generations of graffiti mm. writers, it's like their, their emergency to do stuff differs within generation, you know. Yeah. It's, political situations, mm -hmm. social situations, their motivations for doing it, why they began mm -hmm. doing it in the first place. Th their, their emergencies are different. Mm. Like, tracks would be different to yours. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a different political situation mm -hmm. and things like that. Do you think, do you think that correlates with a lot of the reasons why you may have jumped into doing it? Or do you think it doesn't really connect too no, much? It's a good question. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think, like you say, like social situations and the climate yeah. kind of provides a reason for people to get into graffiti and I think there'll be something that y unites all the reasons across mm. across the years the generations, people, yeah. Yeah, generation people getting mm. into it um I think like one thing I noticed with, with my generation of people getting into graffiti was a bit of a disillusion with um this kind of like, you know, consumerist culture was really getting a lot more heightened yeah. throughout like the early noughties and throughout the noughties, basically. And this kind of like pressure to conform, you know, within, mm. within you know, get a career and, and all the rest. And I think a yeah, lot man. of people that I grew up around, it was searching for something with a bit more like romance to it. Um, I love it, that. Yeah. That's so so true yeah you know like it's, it, i think originally it was young people screaming out and trying to make a name and you know f kind of born out of like shit situations do you know yeah. what I'm if you go right back to you know the yeah. bronx and things like that it's yeah. like a wasteland and kids creating this beautiful art form as way of getting their name out there and it's, yeah. it's an amazing thing and i think that still exists people will still get into it for the same reason t yeah. today but um you know i, I think like f for for my friends and a lot of the people I knew, it was very much disillusioned with, with like, politics. And you've got to remember, like, this is, like, you know, Tony Blair and the Iraq yeah, yeah. War and... Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything was, like, this this kind of a new American consumerist culture was heightened. Yeah, yeah it kind of came through, didn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. really coming through. Right, you know, like, quite soon after 9-11, it yeah. was like, this took on this whole new thing. And things got quite intense in London. Yeah. Um, rap music, American rap music came through, like... Yeah. I mean, it opened the doors for, like, yeah. a scene over here, like, you know, mm. pre-Channel U, pre-anything yeah. like that. 
that yeah. this, this was coming into the club. So I remember you, you're yeah. absolutely right. You're yeah. right. Yeah, it was a de- definitely a change. Like, I remember the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't active in the 90s, but, you know, I started writing in the late 90s mm. and I was, you know, just a kid growing up around Camden. I remember what that atmosphere was like. And mm. it was definitely different to, like, by the mid noughties, ten years later. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think, you know, ultimately graffiti will always be... Um, it, it's a way of trying to escape... It's escapism in its, in its purest form. And I think there's lots of amazing subcultures and um, things going on within London or the big cities mm. around the world. But quite often they're, they're like not so accessible or visible. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there'll be ama- amazing scenes of the music all over, but like you have to tap into that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, or there is, uh, you know, say like stuff, really cool stuff going on with, within fashion. But a lot of the time, there's like a there's money attached to these things. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There's more. There's more of a commercial side to these things. Not music. Like music, obviously, is a huge industry. But people do music for the purest thing. People yeah. do fashion for the pure thing. But as well. But I think graffiti is this. Remains this like very pure, visible subculture. So yeah. when you're a kid, you know, like if you're if you're driving around, and, you know, with your dad, your mom, or whatever, and you see kids skating that's something where you're like what are they doing do you yeah. know what I mean like what's this, what is that yeah. that's a little world I don't know about and graffiti yeah, yeah. is the same it's yeah. like what is going on there like who, mm. who's done that and I think that still still remains and I think that's why it's like one of the most important yeah. kind of um, subcultures w- within cities like around the world to date because yeah. especially now everyone's looking on their phones and shit do you know what I mean and it's yeah. like you might scroll past graffiti on Instagram and be like oh, that's cool but you still have to fucking go out there and do it if you, yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah. If you want your picture to be on Instagram. Do you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Whereas like other other things, I'm not sure how physical world it is. Do you know I'm what I'm saying? I know exactly what you mean. Not to discredit anything. No, no, like, no. You know, it's just 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 the observation. Yeah, yeah. No, know? no. I, um, I agree yeah. with you. Like top three, top three that is graffiti mm. in terms of street culture. Graffiti. I think beatboxing and the the up front bang I've yeah. seen it on a video yeah. and skateboarding I think yeah. I can't think of any other ones that yeah. that really harness mm-hmm. true authenticity of like well we're doing this because we love this yeah 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 it's very pure yeah and yeah. it's going to hurt mm. she isn't nice you know yeah. she, if if you get bagged writing it's the same as if like you fall doing mm. skateboarding yeah exactly yeah yeah there's a certain amount of kind of <clears throat> resilience you need mm-hmm. with doing it so you got like a sc- uh, like a skateboard background yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was like my first, like music and like skating was definitely my first mm. real passions. Like, I was really into like punk music when I was a kid. Oh, and, nice. Like, and skating kind of went hand in hand yeah. at that at that point. What so, kind of punk? What stuff? You know, I was like, I was actually into a lot of the um, more like poppy American sounding stuff. Or the like, Blink sort of stuff. You no, know, that was too poppy. But like, you know, like um, melodic's a better term yeah. for it. Do you know what I mean, no effects on bad religion. And rancid. And rancid, yeah. things like that. Um, and my, you know, my dad would always try and put me on to like the Clash. He heard yeah. Rancid and he was like... They're you know, close to Clash though. They, they were very, do, very directly yeah. inspired by yeah, it. Yeah. But like for, you know, like a, a kid, a, you know, as a kid... Yeah that more poppy sound mm. like, appealed to you for whatever reasons. Um, but then, yeah, I used to get, like... I learned about all that from Thrasher magazine. So skating was my first thing. Yeah. And I used to get Thrasher magazine every now and again, and then they'd have all of the, yeah. the, the adverts for the albums in yeah. the back and stuff. So, um, yeah. But then, like, you know what? Is, uh, skating, I found a little bit too... Um, too difficult. <laughs> Long story short. I was, you know, I could do a few <laughs> tricks, but, like, I wasn't... I got frustrated. You know, I get to a certain age and it's like, I'd get down to South Bank and just kind of give up quite quickly and start smoking weed. Whereas like, graffiti was um, something that, I guess you can really, really like, practice different routes into it. And it yeah. was like, it was just easier for me to access for whatever reason. I guess like, I guess the creative side of my brain yeah. is always more active. Yeah. Not that skating is not creative, but, uh, you know, like sports and stuff, I've always been interested in skating in particular, but yeah. never clicked quite as well, you know. So, um, yeah, skating, I kind of, by like 15, I'd faded that out, to be honest. Quite really? Young. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Graffiti just took over. Yeah. yeah. It's probably for the best. People's joints don't last that long in yeah, skateboarding, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, mates I know that are just like, can't yeah. even get out. It takes them like 15 minutes to shake themselves out of bed. I know.